whether you're starting a digital transformation project or trying to publish data from your control system. Electric Supply and Equipment, a full service electrical distributor, has automation products to achieve this objective. My name is Jeremy Oxendine. I am a software information specialist with Electric Supply and Equipment. I want to talk with you about one of the products we sell for allowing the reading and writing of data to your control system via RESTful web service. This product is called the IoT Gateway and is developed by Kepware. It presents RESTful web services for integration with MES and other systems. It seamlessly streams real-time industrial data directly into the cloud and big data analytic platforms across the enterprise. I will demonstrate the communications capability with the Control Logics controller by issuing post and get request. So without further delay, let's proceed to the demonstration. So let's go over how I've got my lab set up. I've got a Control Logics controller. We're going to be communicating with this test bar tag. It's inside the controller. I also got Kepware loaded. And Kepware, the IoT gateway, is going to be what provides our RESTful API. So we'll be using communicating uh, with that RESTful API to make those modifications in that controller tag. The other thing I'm running for the inside this lab is a uh, program called Postman. And with that, we're going to post, uh, we're going to issue post and get commands to the uh, RESTful API to make those modifications. So that's all there is to the lab uh, configuration. So let's see how we can set Kepware up to get it uh, communicating and changing those values. So the first thing we need to do is we need to uh, configure the IoT gateway. So I'm going to do an add agent and we'll give it a name uh, just so we can make it a little easier to track. So uh, I'm going to name mine Kepware underscore REST server. And underneath the type, uh, we did another video on EMQTT client. This week we're doing uh, REST server. Um, we'll follow it up with a video on REST client. But today we're doing a REST server. And so we select that, select next. Um, need to tell it the uh, network adapter we're going to be using. I'm also going to change my port. Um, just for my instance, you don't have to uh, change that if you don't want to, but for me, I'm going to change that port. And uh, I'm also going to do something called enable. I'm also going to turn off the uh, HTTPS and just going to use regular HTTP. I want to allow an anonymous login. I'm also going to enable uh, write to the endpoint so I'll be able to write to those data points. And I'm going to click uh, finish. Now at this point, I need to add some uh, data values or that data value in the controller that I'm going to be able to read and write from, be able to do post and get to it. So I'm going to do add. And I've already gone through and set up the channel to my AB controller, so all that's been done previously. So I'm just going to go select that uh, test bar tag, and I'm going to tell it uh, rate uh, scan this tag every 100 or 1,000 milliseconds. I'm going to enable that, and just for uh, additional benefit, I'm going to show you. I'm going to add a another tag and I'm just going to add the float tag and so that's pretty much it for setting up the uh, Kepware from a uh, the, getting the REST server ready to go so that we can issue requests to it. So let me show you something uh, underneath the properties of the IoT gateway where we just configured the uh, REST server. If you go on these properties server you'll notice this URL address. If you click on that address or paste that address into a web browser, it will take you to uh, this page here. So this page is being, this, this web page is being served from the Kepware application. And it basically gives you some indication of what you can do with this RESTful API, some documentation through that, through this web page. You can browse, you can do a browse and read, which are or a get uh, request, and then you can do a write, which is a post request. And it basically gives you some URL information, uh, the format that uh, the information is going to be returned in, uh, rather the method that's used, uh, 
the return you would get if it's successful. And again, just providing some general information you're going to need to make these uh, calls to the RESTful API. So just want to make you aware of that. So let's start by making a simple browse request. And as I said earlier, I'm going to be using uh, Postman to issue these requests. And you can see that I'm uh, referencing HTTP colon backslash backslash 192.168.10.204. That is the IP address of the box or the server which is running Kepware. Uh, remember that port I put in was uh, 1880 and then the IoT gateway and then backslash browse. Now again, uh, to point this out one more time, if I go into properties, server, I've got this address I can go to. And once inside that address, I can see that if I wanted to issue a browse command, that's where I got that string from. So it's documented in this web page. So if I issue that request to browse, you can see it returned two values, one of which is the, it's basically the tags that have been defined within this REST server configuration. So those are the two tags. Now I can also issue a get request, which is a read. And when I do that, uh, again, going back to that web page, gives you some, uh, good documentation on how to configure that. So that's the URL you're going to use. And this is an example of it. And obviously I had to change it to my tag name, but if you specify the tag name, then it will return that value. So let's, let's try that. So go in here, I'm going to do a read again, the web address, the port, the uh, IOT gateway, which again is referencing the uh, Kepler server and then uh, a read request and then the ID of the tag that I'm going to want to pull out. So I'm going to do a send and I can see it pulled back a value of 34. Now is that the value? Sure enough, test bar one, test bar one, value of 34. So let's change this value to 67 and let's send that request again you see value 67. So what I'm doing here again is I'm issuing these get request to a RESTful API, which is being defined by the Kepware and it is communicating and pulling those tag values back and sending me back that get or that read request of that tag value. So let's try one other thing. Let's try to actually write a tag. And in other words, let's modify this test value by issuing a post request. Now, this gets a little different. And I must admit that the documentation here is not that clear on, on how to put that together. So it tells you to use this URL, um, again, the IP address, the port, uh, to gateway, forward slash write. But within the body, within the body of that request is where you've got to specify the ID tag value 34. So it's a JSON format. So what I'm going to do is uh, basically if you wanted to do a different tag, you would just say ID colon different tag name value, whatever it is you're going to write. If it was a string, then obviously it'd be a string, but we're writing to a floating point. So I'm going to thin this request and right now we are at value of 67. So I'm going to try to change it to a 34. I got a request a response back of 200. Okay. Which means I succeeded and sure enough value of 34. So that's how you can send a post to write or to modify that value through that RESTful API. So let's say I wanted to write more than just one tag. I want to be able to write to two tags with one request. So the way I do that is you could actually take on uh, and copy for easy sake of retyping all this. I'm just going to copy this again. And so what you want to do is you want to come in here, your first tag, 
get rid of the bracket, not the curly bracket, you gotta leave the curly bracket, and then put a comma, the name of the new tag, and then finish it up with a closed bracket. So these are the, the tail end of these are what starts this and what ends it is a square bracket. And then each uh, item that's going to be modified is set off by curly brackets. So obviously I've got to change the tag name in here. So I'm going to change this one to uh, uh, FLT1. Now how do I know to change that to FLT1? Because if you remember, these are the tags that are available for us to communicate via this RESTful API. I had to add them in here. So we've got that done and I'm gonna change this tag to 23 and I'm gonna change this tag to 33, okay? So when I send this request, we should see the test bar one go to a value of 23 and that value of the FLT should go to a value of 33. So if we hit send, I got a 200 response back, which means it worked. And then, of course, that's the values that got changed. So if we want to change multiple values, we can do that. We can also do the same thing with a GET request, a little bit different. But if I want to do a GET request and we grab multiple values back, it would be taking this value, Control-C, and again, to find out how we write this, it's very easy. We can go in here and open up this web browser. We can very easily come into this web page and it documents this very well about how we add a second one. So you just put that little ampersand signal in, or ampersand uh, character in there between your tags. So let me go back to my um, postman and we want to put that uh, ampersand signal or tag or character and of course we're going to change this to FLT1 right and I'm going to do a send and this one returned two values so if you want to return two values you just put uh, it in the URL request with an ampersand between them if you want to post two values you got to put it in the body of the JSON uh, code if you will whenever you uh, submit the post command. So that's how you can read and write multiple values. So one thing I said I'd follow up on and that is how you would issue a command via the curl utility to make those same modifications. And now we're still using Postman. I'm just going to use the curl utility now to write a, a data value. And this uh, web page that I referred to earlier that provides the documentation does a very good job of showing you exactly how to issue these curl commands to be able to uh, browse the tags that have been defined to be able to go in and read those tags and then to be able to go in and write those tags. So I'm going to issue a write. This one example here is where it's writing three. I'm only going to write one. So basically if you're just going to write one, you just get rid of the comma all the way down to the last curly bracket. Make sure you keep the uh, square bracket and the quotation and then the web address. So um, open this up and I'm gonna change my test bar one to a value of 45, okay? So test bar one, actually let's change it to something else. Let's change it to, uh, it's already at 45, let's change it to 56 would be a good one. So let me backspace or slide over and change that to 56. Go to the end, hit enter. And now we come over here and we see that the value has changed to 56. So you can use the curl utility to give good examples of how to use that to be able to write into that RESTful API. So that pretty much does it for the demonstration. Real easy to do. Uh, syntax, uh, can be a little cryptic, but that's no fault of Kepware. That's just the, uh, the way the API works uh, to communicate with uh, RESTful API. So syntax is uh, nothing Kepware can address there from that standpoint, but real easy to set up, not very complex. Just go in to find your tags and then uh, follow the uh, documentation on how to issue those commands. Thank you for your time today. 
I hope you have found this video demonstration on communications with your control system using RESTful web services helpful. If you have any further questions or need additional assistance, please do not hesitate to contact an electric supply and equipment representative.